Taylor here with AgriSpray Drones. Whenever you get your J100, you're probably gonna to wanna to go out to the field and start ripping and start spraying acres and just hitting it. I caution you, you should learn how to fly the drone manually first and also know what to look at before you take off. It's, we always, all of our pilots here at AgriSpray Drones, they always get their first flight as manual flight. They fly several batteries, just learning the sticks, learning how to control it manually, just in case you have to. So today we're going through a pre-flight checklist and showing you the, your first manual flight, stick commands, and some of your settings as well. Let's get to it. So we're doing 100 set up here. We have a battery and we have uh, our remote. Now we're in a location here where we don't have any obstacles. The only obstacle is one center pivot. So we're gonna stay on this side of it. Make sure there's no trees around you. Make sure that you're away from a big road and like that, just so that if anything happens, the drone can land safely and uh, and no one gets hurt. Um, we're gonna go ahead and throw a battery in the drone. We're not gonna power it on yet. And make sure that positive goes on the plus, negative goes on the minus. If you do swip it, swap it around, it doesn't matter, it just won't boot up. Make sure that's firmly pressed in there. There's no latches, it gets held in there just by the force of the battery itself. We'll get our remote out. And it's always best to boot your remote up first and then your drone. And make sure that when you're traveling with your remote, this case is a case for a reason. This case helps protect your sticks and your antennas. So make sure it goes back in the case and not on the dash of your pickup so it can fall off and bend up a stick. You don't need anything else to fly the drone manually, just a battery, your remote, and the drone. So to power on the remote, it is a long press on the, on the power button until your lights flash, and then it's a short press. And the remote's gonna go ahead and boot up. While the remote's booting up, we'll set it down, and we'll do a pre-flight checklist on our drone. Now, what does that entail? Really, that just entails making sure that everything's secure, your props are secure, nothing is loose, nothing is cracked, uh, and everything feels tight. Um, I do recommend that you make your own pre-flight checklist um, that works kind of with your flow of operations. We're gonna go ahead and unfold out the drone. It is the, the bottom that goes first and then the top and latch our arms in. Make sure that you hear that nice pop sound that means it's tight. If it's really, if it's loose, if it feels loose and you don't get that cam over right there, uh, then you can actually tighten up uh, your turnbuckle. So one way is loosen, one way is tighten. Give it a few turns and see if it feels better. These feel tight. Next thing we're gonna check is uh, our connection right here. Make sure that we don't have a lot of play. And you're looking right here at this crack right there where the arm actually mounts to the frame of the drone and we don't have any play. If you see that crack get wider and shorter whenever you lift up on the, on the arm, then you might have to tighten up this bolt right here. There's a nut on the bottom and you can tighten that up. We're gonna move down the arm. We're gonna make sure that there are no cracks in our carbon fiber. If there's a crack in your carbon fiber, that will weaken the arm and it might snap in the air. And then we'll take our motor, we'll twist it side to side, this way right here, and then this way, the opposite direction and make sure there's no play in the actual mounting of the motor itself. And then we'll fold out the props and make sure that the props have a little bit of resistance. You don't want a lot of resistance. If you have to really crank on it to get it out there, that's not good. But you also don't want them just flopping around. Uh, that might mean that a prop either needs to be replaced uh, or you've uh, loosened up your bolt here. These have resistance, but not too much resistance. Fold those out to about 180. They don't have to be perfect. It will spin them out with centrifugal force. And then moving down the props, make sure that especially your leading edge, which is kind of the upper side right here, make sure the leading edge of the prop does not have uh, any chips or cracks in it. You can bend up and down on the prop a little bit and just make sure you don't see any hairline cracks forming. If there are hairline cracks, then you might have a prop failure in the air. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the rest of the forearms.
Okay, arms, props, motors are all good on this drone. That is the most critical part when you're in the air. All of your weight is on these four motors and these four props. Um, okay, everything else really is checked by the drone. All of your electronics, it does a self-check with your ESCs, GPS, all of that should be automatic. There are some sprayer system uh, checks that you wanna do, but this is just a manual flight demo. All right, next we'll go ahead and boot up the drone. So that is a long press, same thing on the remote. To get that flashing there and then a short press. Long press, red light flashes, flashes and a short press. The drone's gonna go through a boot up sequence here. It's going to start acquiring satellites. It's gonna to connect to our remote um, and it's going to make sure that it's ready to go. I'll start my screen recording. This may take uh, about 30 seconds to a minute uh, for the drone to acquire satellites and connect to your remote. And hopefully this one was connected from the shop. They just updated the software on here, so I may have to reconnect it. Well, I'll go ahead and do that. So if your remote does not connect uh, to your drone, then we're just gonna hold down on our linking button here until we get red and green flash. Pull up, this just pulls straight off. And we're just going to tap right there once until we get a blue light flashing on our drone icon. Then we'll automatically pair the remote to the drone. All right, we're solid green now. Right there, solid green. Okay, you can go into auto or you can select over and go into manual. It really doesn't matter if you're just manually flying, not spraying anything. It'll function the same way either way. So we'll just go into auto. If you wanna go back out, click on your home button up in the top, or top left and that takes you back out here. All right, now before we take off, we wanna go through a few of our settings and make sure we have the correct ones turned on for a manual flight. That's up in the upper right corner. Um, and under flight settings, everything should be okay here. Um, leave sport mode off, especially for your first flight. Uh, then we're gonna go down to our perception settings, the second one down. These top two are for your uh, autonomous flight. Uh, those should stay on pretty much all the time, uh, but for manual flight, it doesn't matter. And then the next two after that are manual H avoidance and manual V avoidance. So that's in manual flight for horizontal obstacle avoidance, front, left, back and right, uh, back and forward. Uh, that should be turned on. And manual V avoidance. You don't have to turn this one on. Actually, we recommend not to turn it on uh, because if you turn this on, it will not allow the drone to land or go below eight feet um, or whatever distance you have it set to. It's a safety feature, uh, but for just manual flying, manual we're gonna remove that. Now you can hot key that one. Sometimes what we do is we'll come into our remote settings um, and we'll select one of these uh, buttons, R1, 2, or 3, uh, for our manual V avoid on, and then one of them for manual V avoid off. That way you can hot key on quickly and hot key off quickly without going to your settings. But we'll just leave it off for this video. Okay, now up in the top left, we see that says system ready GPS mode. Uh, this is, this whenever it's green like this, that means it's ready to fly, but it's ready to fly in autonomous mode. Your manual selector is right here. Flip that up, and now it says manual control. Middle is also manual control. All the way down is autonomous mode. So flip it up. When it says manual control, now we can manually fly the drone. Before we do, we're going to back away. It's best to be oh, at least 30 feet away from the drone when you take off and not to be backed against something that you can't get out of the way. You know, heaven forbid if something happens and you lose a motor in the air and it starts coming towards you, you wanna be able to get behind something or get out of the way quickly. Uh, you never want to fully and completely trust the drones and stand just 10 feet away whenever you're taking off and landing. That's the most critical time uh, when it comes to safety and paying attention. So we're gonna go over and stand by our truck and we'll take off from there. Okay, we're far enough away now, plus I have something uh, to duck behind if I need to. 
Um, we're going to go ahead and check and make sure we have enough battery in our remote and our drone. Up in the top, uh, kind of towards the left, we've got 100% battery that is in the drone. You see a little drone icon right there. We have 28 satellites um, and we have 43% battery in our remote. That's good and our tank is empty. You want an empty tank for your first takeoff. One last thing we're gonna check because it does say RTK. Uh, we're going to make sure that we are not on RTK and we will disconnect RTK and just fly on regular GPS mode. Uh, we should be, yep, we're disconnected. We should be good to go. All right, so to arm the drone, that means to spin the props up. That is both sticks down and all the way in. There you see we have a spin up. It's not going to take off. It's just going to sit right there armed and ready to fly. Now, if the drone is armed and spinning on the ground, there's two ways to stop your props if you don't want your props to spin. Um, the first way is stick down, the left stick straight down. That's your altitude stick. Left stick straight down, hold that down. That will stop your props as long as you're on the newest firmware. Uh, if you're not on the newest firmware or another way to kill your props is both sticks down and out just like that, and do it quickly too, down and out, because you will give the drone command uh, whenever you do this, so quickly down and out, and that will kill your props as well. This will also kill your props if you're in the air, so do not do this, it sticks down and out, if you're in the air. That's an emergency shutoff. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and spin our props back up. Sticks down and in. Props are spun up. Now, since we are operating in GPS mode, it has a GPS hold, and so you can take off right now and it will stay hovering where it's at. I'll do that right now with this left stick, my altitude stick, straight up. And when you let go, it's just going to hover. We have a significant breeze down here as well. You can see it's maintaining its position, both altitude and latitude and longitude. It's just gonna stay just like this until we move it. Okay, so as far as your stick commands, your right stick is lateral movements. So forward is forward to the drone. I'm gonna push forward on the right stick. Now the drone is flying forward. I'll stop it. And now my left stick does my, my spinning and my altitude. So I can spin the drone to the left, spin the drone to the right, and my down and my up is right there as well. Whenever you're flying the drone this close to us right now, we're probably uh, about 60, 70 feet away, eyes on the drone, not on your screen. You wanna make sure that you are watching the drone at all times and developing that hand-eye coordination from watching the drone to doing what the, you need to do with the sticks. When it's further away from you, you wanna be able to pay attention to the screen. You wanna practice both, but first, look at the drone whenever it's this close to us. All right, I'll fly it forward and turn at the same time. Turn right and turn left while flying forward. This is a good practice to get into. That way you understand how to fly forward and turn to go around the edge of a field. I you wanna practice actually facing the drone towards us. If you look right now, the drone is actually facing toward us. So if I move left on my right stick, the drone's actually gonna to go to my right. This is very confusing whenever the drone's actually coming back towards us from home and we want to take our manual control, then it's actually backwards from what our stick is. Facing this way, it's correct. Facing this way, it's backwards. When you do this, I like to have multiple takeoff and landings. That is the most critical part of the operation. So practice your takeoff and landings and practice your aerial maneuvers and combination maneuvers as well. Make sure you go easy on the sticks. Don't jam the sticks all the way one direction. The drone has very quick acceleration. Very easy on the sticks. So we'll bring it down out on the field and land it manually. And you want to do nice and easy on the stick as you get close to the ground. Easy on the stick and then all the way down. That will kill the props. Take off again. Sticks down and in. We'll kill it, sticks down and out. We'll arm it again and take off. This is what you need to be practicing multiple, multiple times in an open field. Manual control, 
and gradually being able to fly faster and faster, doing more and more combination moves until you're comfortable. All right, we'll bring it back and we'll land it manually. We're not gonna use a return to home feature at all right now because we want to have full control of the drone so that we can learn. I'll spin it, bring it down. And kill it. Things to pay attention to while you are practicing your manual flight. You wanna pay attention to your battery level. We are at 66% now, so we lost about 34% just in that flight. When we fill this drone up and fly it with a full tank, our battery percentage is gonna drop quite a bit faster. That's actually what we recommend to do. Fly it manually with empty tank at least three or four battery cycles, then fly it manually with a full tank without spraying anything for three or four battery cycles and just watch how fast that battery level drops and pay attention to how your acceleration, your deceleration changes as well. You also wanna pay attention to our height and our speed. Uh, these are two really good factors to understand. If you can't see the drone very well and it's very far away, you wanna know how high you are off the ground and how fast you're going. And your radar right here, this detects obstacles around the drone so that you have some peripherals. And your camera as well, bottom left corner. Here's our camera and our gimbal on the left side. Once you get good at flying the drone in close proximity to you where you can see it, then you wanna take it further away from you and use your camera to fly the drone and using your gimbal and watching your height and your speed and doing it through the remote screen, not through watching the drone. Okay, I think I covered everything. Please don't rush, please pay attention. Please make sure that every one of your pilots, not just you, every one of your pilots does exactly what I did multiple times and gets comfortable before spraying for the first time. If you guys have any questions, reach out to us, let us know. Thanks.